Okay, cool. So I'm going to start. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, everyone doing okay? Good? Yeah? So I'm here to talk to you about how we can get uh, and provision um, OpenStack to run on Kubernetes all the way from a network, ne network booting your, your bare metal. Um, the funny thing here is that a um, uh, couple months ago when I applied for this talk, I realized that uh, it takes a little longer than two minutes to get OpenStack on Kubernetes from PC booting your, your bare metal devices. Uh, but still, 15 minutes is not too bad, right? Still pretty cool. Um, before I start, um, I wanna sp I'm going to spoil this a little bit for you. Um, Apart from this presentation, you guys are going to get a demo. Not just any demo, it's going to be a live demo. I'm going to actually gonna demo getting OpenStack running on Kubernetes all the way from bare metal that hasn't been provisioned or, or booted. Um, but I'm going to do this a little differently. Um, normally, you, know, you have your presentation first, and then after presentation, you have your, your demo. But just uh, since because, uh, just because of what I said previously, that it takes a little longer to get um, you know, OpenStack on Kubernetes from the metal running, um, I'm going to do this in a different way. I'm going to do the presentation and the demo simultaneously. Uh, and I hope I don't confuse you too much. And the reason I'm doing this is um, uh, because I want you to show you, uh, at the end of the, of the talk, I want, to, I want you guys to see the whole flow completed, because I think it's really cool. Um, and, uh, and I really hope I don't confuse you. <laughs> so we without further ado, I'm going to start the demo first. So I'm going to exit this. So I'm going to be switching back and forth from my slides to my terminal. So let's see. Can you guys see this? No? <laughs> the font is actually pretty big on my, uh, on my computer here. So let me know when to stop. Is it good? All right. Cool. So I'm actually connected to um, one of our data center um, via VPN, and I have three, you know, bare metal hosts assigned to me. So um, and they're powered off. So just in case you guys don't believe me, if I ping um, castle10.rook.com, I can no response, right? Same things with castle11.rook.com. Also, no response. And finally, castle12.rook.com, nothing. So they're power off. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use IPMI to turn them on. So, uh, so I'm going to turn on. Uh, whoop. I'm going to turn on castle 10 first. Power on. Castle 11. Turn on. And 12. All right, and I'm going to tell this log that's going to tell me, um, you know, um, what happened when, uh, when the machine boot up and the, how it gets all the images and all that. Um, but while, while I was doing that, I'm going to switch back to my presentation. And just to make it a little more clear, um, I'm going to give you a summary of what the demo is going to do. Um, so it, it's going to power on the machine, which I just did. Um, once the mas machine are powered on um, and it gets the IP from DHCP, it will request an image. Um, and then it will get the correct image and configuration for it. And I'm going to tell you how it's doing that later during my presentation. Um, once the machine is bootstrapped with the OS image, it's going to install Kubernetes. And once Kubernetes, uh, it's going to install a three, three node Kubernetes cluster. And once Kubernetes cluster is, is up and running, it will install OpenStack on top of it. Um, and hopefully you enjoy that. <laughs> uh, before I move on, um, you know, uh, let's, let's get over with the boring stuff first, right? Let's talk about me. Uh, my name's Steve Leon. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I work for Castle, which is, which is a research division under our parent company, Quantum. Um, at Castle, I work for Rook. If you guys don't know what Rook is, it's a pretty cool project that we started. Um, basically, it's, a, it's, a, it's an open source project that, uh, pro, that, that provides software-defined storage for cloud-native application. It's natively deeply integrated with Kubernetes, and it's based on Ceph. 
So it's pretty cool because you can take all the complexity of Ceph, you know, package it up, and just use kubectl to deploy a Ceph cluster on your Kubernetes. And, and that will deploy your OSD, your monitor, your, your IGW, right, um, and all that uh, for, Kubernetes to be, to, for Kubernetes to consume. Um, so please do check it out if, if, if you want to know more about it. Um, I also be involved with, uh, with the uh, OpenStack community since 2012, 13. So I contributed to projects like Trove, Horizon, um, Low Balancer Octavia, you know, Q Tempest, and, and others. Um, so just before I continue, just, just out of curiosity, show me show of hand, uh, how many of you have deployed OpenStack? Uh, and, and when I say OpenStack, I don't mean DevStack, okay? I mean a production grade, multi-host OpenStack. All right, cool, a lot of you. Uh, I, th I think most of you will agree with me when I say that OpenStack is really hard, right? To deploy OpenStack is really hard. I mean, it has so many services, and each of those services has like many different components, right? And each of those components, you know, uh, you can configure them and tweak them in many different ways. Like, you will know what I'm talking about if you open up, I don't know, like the Nova Compute Conf file or the Cinder API Conf file. There are like so many things that you can configure. So it's really hard. And to deploy OpenStack, you need to pretty much be an expert on OpenStack, right? And I know you guys probably have your secret sauce. You have your, uh, you have your secret sauce to make this more manageable. You probably have your, I don't know, your Puppet Manifest or your Chef Cook's books or Ansible Playbook, Salt Script. Even OpenStack created a uh, triple to make this easier and manageable. But still, like, to get all these tools right and to work consistently and reliably, it's really hard to do. You know, not just anyone can do all that and, and, and make it happen. And, and, and for you to do that, you, you have to do a lot of things. You, not only you have to be an expert, you have to, like, I don't know, go to IRC and ask, uh, ask, ask a, bu a bunch of questions. You have to scour the internet for documentation, manual, blogs, scripts, hacks, right? The bottom line is that installing, deploying OpenStack is really, really hard. Um, let me just uh, go back again to my terminal to see what happened to my servers. And let's see. Oops, OK. OK, so it looks like my three servers that I turn on I think they're up and running. So if I ping them now again, I have, oh, not yet. OK, so let's just wait a little longer. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so deploying OpenStack is really hard, right? But let's say that, you know, um, oh, let me just, let's say that you, uh, you know, you were, you know, you were good. You're, you managed to deploy OpenStack, uh, production create OpenStack. You're, you're feeling sad and you're feeling happy. You know what? Yes, life is good, right? You do your Nova boot, your VM becomes active, right? You give it to your boss, you know, hey, I'm done. I did it, right? Uh, yeah, not so fast, right? Um, the, 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 the challenge of OpenStack don't stop after you deploy it, right? That's just the beginning, you know? You still have to manage it, right? You have to install your monitoring and alerting system, right, to make sure that the state of the OpenStack cluster is what, is, what you expect it to be. You know, you need to install a logging system to, you know, to, to, to get your analytics and debugging information when something goes wrong, right? Uh, you're, you need to de deploy lo uh, load balancer, right, to, to load balance your, your APIs. Um, uh, I don't know, you need also need to deploy your billing services um, um, just in case if you're providing any public services. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, you still need to add more stuff to it, and by adding more stuff to it, you need to have more script tooling, you know, and this just makes it a little more complicated. Scaling, all right? What if I want to add a new Nova API? What if I want to grow my Galera cluster? Like I said, that's, this, is, this is not trivial, right? You, the, you, you need more script, more tooling, more Ansible playbooks, right, to do all that stuff. What happens when things go south? Huh? 
what happens? Your server crashes. Your VM crashes. Your node goes down. I'll tell you what happens. You know, you're going to get a phone call or a pager. You know, you have to like, go to, run to your laptop, SSH into your, into your environment, and fix it, right? Uh, how do you fix it? You try to restart your service. Hopefully, that fixes it. Uh, and sometimes, you know, things are not recoverable in which you have to, you know, de uh, delete the whole VM and run your playbook or your cookbooks and recreate a new VM and deploy your service. That's, that's, it's hard. <laughs> so you thought that deploying OpenStack is hard? Try updating it. It's a nightmare. Uh, you know, not only you have to upgrade your, your, your packages, right? You have to make sure that your config works, right? You have to make sure that new configs have to be applied. Uh, you have to pray that your database migration, you know, actually succeed, right? And God forbid if you didn't create a backup of your database before you started this upgrade. Um, also, what happens if you, uh, how do you patch vulnerability? What happens if you have your new, your, what happens when the other, uh, when, when an, a heart bleed or a dirty cow comes in, right? What do you do? You know, you have to patch your host, then you have to patch your, all your, um, your user workloads VMs, and then you have to go to Glance and update new images with the fixes, right? It, 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 yeah, it's, it's, OpenStack is difficult. Um, just hold on that, and let's just go back to the demo again and see what this is doing. Okay, so let's see. Okay, looks like ping is working. So if I ping Castle 10, oh, okay, I get a response. 11, I get a response. And 12, I get a response. Okay, so I'm just gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all the uh, Kubernetes config to each of those machines so that they get deployed up correctly. So I uh, just have a script here. So all I'm doing here is just SCPing like the, the certificate for the API to config, to, to, get, to configure um, the configs. Um, and, 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 and started uh, my Kubernetes, um, uh, Kubernetes deployment. So if I go, to, if I do a kubectl get notes, um, oh, I need to, I need to point the client to, to the right API. So, so if I do that, I still, you know, it's still not, not running. So what I'm gonna do is that while Kubernetes is getting up and running, I'm gonna watch it. All right, so after a while, after a minute or so, we should see the, the cluster coming up. So let's go back to the, while well, that's happening, let's go back to the presentation. I hope that this flip back and forth is not confusing and you guys, you, you guys, you guys still can follow this. Uh, so where was I? Oh yeah, so yeah, OpenStack is really hard. Um, but I'm wondering if, there's something out there that can help me with all this. Something that will make my deployment uh, of Kubernetes, of, of, um, of OpenStack easier. Or no OpenStack, any application uh, for that matter. Something that will, you know, that, that can help me manage it. Something that have, you know, have self-healing mechanism, right? Something that can just scale easy. Or that I, something that can allow me to upgrade with confidence. Is there something out there that can help me do all that? Uh, I think there is, right? I, I know, I, I, I knew you guys knew that was coming, but I wanna make it a little more dramatic. Uh, yeah, so Kubernetes. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about Kubernetes or the basic of it, because you know this is the, like the third day of the summit, and I'm sure you guys have been to a lot of Kubernetes talk, and you guys probably tire of, you know, you know get information about what it is and the basic and all that. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume that you guys are, are hopefully familiarized with, I guess, at least with the basic of Kubernetes. Uh, but having said that, you know, Kubernetes, you know, is pretty much a, a platform that manages and orchestrates um, containerized application, right? And the good thing about it is that it solves, it addresses all the issues that I just mentioned, right? It, 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 it allows you to deploy application um, a lot easier. 
It allows you to scale them easier. Um, it has self-healing capability so that when things go south, you don't have to worry about it, right? It, Kubernetes will actually automatically bring it up. And upgrade, you know, you can do rolling upgrade e as easily as well. You don't have to be scared about it, right? Um, so yeah, thanks go for Kubernetes. Life is good again, right? Let's go back again to, oh, okay, so looks like, uh, so look like it's getting there, so at least it detected it. Uh, okay, one more to go. Should we wait or should we go back to the presentation? Let's wait 10 seconds and see. Okay, I, I think we can, we can go back to, let me see. I think the cluster is up. I mean, two, two clusters enough for me to start deploying things. So I'm gonna start deploying OpenStack right now. Um, so, um, I'm gonna use uh, my cheat sheet to deploy, to start deploying OpenStack. Um, and I'm gonna tell you like uh, later what, what I'm doing here. Um, I'm, I'm using actually Kubernetes, uh, OpenStack, Kubernetes, Kubernetes to deploy uh, OpenStack. So you're probably familiar with this, so. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, I just did this to, to set up the RBAC so that um, Cola can start creating Kubernetes. And it uses Helm, so I'm gonna use Helm in it to do this. And uh, I'm gonna run all this together uh, in one shot and I'm gonna kind of explain what is, this is doing. Um, yeah, so in here what I'm doing is, is um, um, I create a new namespace. I have three node cluster, right? I'm gonna assign the first cluster to be the OpenStack controller. That's where all the OpenStack control plane is gonna be like the Nova API, the Cinder API, the Keystone API, the, you know, all that stuff. Uh, the, uh, um, and Casu 11 and 12 are gonna be the compute node. Um, I, I'm also using uh, tooling from Cola um, to you know, generate default password for your MySQL, for, for, for your MySQL uh, schema. Uh, and also it's creating uh, the, the Kubernetes config maps to store those passwords. And at the end, I'm, I'm using Helm to deploy my, uh, my, data, my MySQL, my MariaDB uh, database. And so if I wait a little bit, na, na, na. yep. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. While that's running, let's go back to the presentation. I hope I still don't lose you from the back and forth, but bear with me. I, I promise it's gonna be a pretty cool ending. All right, so Kubernetes. So Kubernetes, so far live, right? You know, we can make OpenStack deploy easily, uh, have scale, has self healing capabilities and update. But, you know, Kubernetes is also not for the light harder. You know, there's some component within Kubernetes that is that you have to deploy and, and get right. It's not as compli I, in my opinion, it's not as complicated as deploying OpenStack, but still there, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's not as trivial, you know. Uh, but good, the good thing is that there's a lot of uh, options out there that will help you, you know, make this easier. Perhaps too many options. Uh, there's kubeadm, bootcube, cops, kube deploy, Kubernetes anywhere, cargo, kube ansible. And if you're, you're in cloud, you know, you can use GKE and Azure. And if you're development, you know, you can use things like Minikube. There's a CoreOS Vagrant script that works really well too. Uh, and your local app, local app cluster script that brings up uh, Kubernetes from your, your, uh, from your code actually builds up and, you know, and that, that's, good if, that, that, that's good if you're deploying and, de and developing against Kubernetes itself. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the terminal and see what, where am I now? Okay, so if I do kubectl dash n cola get pod, Okay, so my, 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 my MariaDB is still uh, in initialization mode. So I'm, I'm just gonna watch it. It should be running, oh, it is running already. Cool, that was fast. 
All right. So now that my DB is up and running, I can go back to my cheat sheet and deploy the rest of the services. So I'm, uh, I'm going to copy and paste all this here. And I, I know I'm doing a little menu step here. And the reason I'm doing this is, is for the sake of the demo. But you can easily bootstrap this and make it more automated by either, you know, um, by uh, uh, baking it on the image or creating a system D script. Why can I copy and paste here? Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, copy and paste. I'm, I'm used to using a mouth, uh, 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 which I don't have here, so. Hmm. Okay, I need to press the track. Uh, highlight? What do you? Nope. <laughs> All right, cool. Woo. <laughs> Copy and paste, work for me. All right, so I'm using Helm to deploy the rest of the services. So this is deploying the, your, your Keystone, your Nova API, your Glance, your, your Neutron. Um, so while that's running, um, go back to the presentation, and hopefully you're, I haven't made you crazy yet by doing all this flip-flopping. Uh, cool. So where was I? Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of ways to, to install Kubernetes. So, you know, um, and like I said, it's probably too many ways. And, but you know what? I, I want to take it a, a, like a step farther, right? I, I want something that, you, something that you can operate simply, consistently, reliably. You know, something that is more, you know, plug and play, something that is more like turnkey, where you can get from your bare metal all the way to running, uh, running OpenStack, you know, with the press of a button, right? That's, that's what I want here. I mean, yes, OpenStack is hard, you know, and, and there's, the Kubernetes makes it better, but yeah, I, want some, I, want, I want something more. I want to be able to like, get my, my, my server, press a button, you know, get a cup of coffee, and then when I come back, OpenStack is running for me. That's what I want. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating to you guys here in a live demo. Um, so, Pixie boot in bare metal to OpenStack uh, to run on Kubernetes. So uh, for me to, to create this environment, I had to have a Pixie boot network boot environment. So this is a machine that typically have all your services and packages that you expect to create a Pixie boot environment. That's your DHCP server, your DNS, uh, TFTP, Apache server, right? That's, yeah. Nothing, um, not, nothing secret here. I'm also using this uh, Matchbox, which is a really cool project from CoreOS. Um, basically, what matches, Matchbox allows you to do is, is it, it matches, Matchbox matches, <laughs> match, matches uh, bare metal host or server uh, to this thing that they call profile. And it matches based on, thing, and on, on labels like Mac ID, right? Um, so a profile is pretty much is, is tells a particular machine you know, how and what is need, uh, needs to be configured and provisioned. So it tells, OK, what OS images need to be provisioned, how it's going to configure, how is like the, the network unit, the system, system D unit, you know, configuration file, like how is that? Pro and I'm going to use Matchbox to provision my Kubernetes cluster. And um, I, I didn't show you, but I, I set up so that Castle 10, one of my machine is going to be the master, and 11 and 12 is going to be my Kubernetes now. Uh, my, Castle 10 is also a Kubernetes now. Well. It, you can sketch your pods. Um, for Kubernetes itself, for the deployment, I'm using Bootcube, which is an, uh, a really cool um, um, way to install Kubernetes. It was actually, it's, it's incubated, and it was actually also in, uh, initiated by, by CoreOS. Um, and it's self-hosted Kubernetes. Do you guys know what self-hosted Kubernetes is? Yeah, no? Self-hosted is a pretty cool idea. It's, what it means is that you're running all the components that make Kubernetes on Kubernetes itself, right? It's kind of like the triple of Kubernetes, if you want to think of it that way. So pretty much I have my Kubernetes API, my control manager, my scheduler, kubelet, right? All that's running as container on Kubernetes. And this is pretty powerful because you can apply 
all this, you can apply all the uh, benefit that Kubernetes provide on Kubernetes itself. You know, so you can, you know, you can use kubectl to scale your Kubernetes API. Uh, if your Kubernetes scheduler or your control manager, you know, crashes or goes down, Kubernetes will bring it up, right? I mean, this is, I think this is pretty powerful. So I'm using that. Um, and like I said, to install OpenStack, I'm using, you know, your truly OpenStack Cola. Uh, and what OpenStack Cola is pretty much is, has, it allows you to have all this, all the OpenStack services that you know about, like the Nova API, Keystone, and all that, uh, RabbitMQ uh, database, all containerized and ready to be used on Kubernetes. Um, all right. One thing I want to say about this is that there's no secret sauce. There's no internal tooling that I'm using for all this. All this is using open source libraries and open source uh, uh, projects, right? So if I can do this, you, there's nothing stopping you from you guys to do the same thing. Because like I said, there's, everything's open source. Um, okay, let's go back to the demo. All right. Cool, so if I do kubectl, then, so Cola installed everything on the Cola namespace. So, all right, you can see that? Oh, maybe it's too big. Huh. But you can see that everything is, you know, it's up to the races. So right now, um, boop. Okay, oop, nope. Yeah, so you can see it, it, um, it's, OpenStack is, is being initialized right now. So normally start, uh, if you can see here my database, okay, probably not, but if I scroll up, you can see that my database is running. Um, it also, after the database is running, it, 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 it uh, runs the, uh, the RabbitMQ, Keystone, and Neutron. Um, oh, you, you can see at the end that RabbitMQ is already, already running. So yeah, so one, all these services are running, then it start the next services, which is the no API and the, and the Cinder API, the Glance and all that. And after that's running, then your compute, Nova compute uh, pod um, gets initialized. Um, this process takes around 10 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes, but in the instant of time, I have another three node cluster that I set up before the presentation, just to show you the end result. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do now. So uh, I'm gonna point this to my other cluster. Okay, so if I do kubectl get node now, um, I have 13, 14, 15. And I brought this environment the same way that I, that I, that, that I showed you in the demo. Everything is PC boot. Um, okay, and I also, if I do a kubectl dynacola, get pot, Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, let me just, this is what I did before. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is a, a different cluster that I started at the beginning, uh, before the presentation, and um, you can see it's uh, 13, 14, 15. It's a three node community cluster, and I brought it up the same way, pixie booting, by turning, by, just by turning it on. Um, and I also deploy OpenStack. So, get part. And you can see it's all running right now, right? Uh, it, was, it wasn't before the presentation, it was two days ago. <laughs> you can see here. Um, and if I source my stack RC for this, uh, this OpenStack, um, I think I have a Nova running somewhere. There you go. So if I, uh, if I do a Nova show demo one, you can see that it's running on Castle 14. You see, you see it? Yeah. Okay, so let, let's, let's uh, just to show you that this is actually working right now, I'm gonna create a VM here. Um, let me see. Uh, what's my image? Serious, okay. Uh, what else do I need? I need flavor. 
Okay, I need uh, my key. Is that how you do it? Oh, key pair list. And what else do I need to create a uh, Nova, uh, Nova server? Oh, the networking. All right, cool. So I think I'm ready. Open stack, server create, dash dash image zeros, dash dash key, is it key name like that? Yes? OK. <laughs> uh, my key, flavor m1 tiny, Nick net ID is equal to. And I'm going to name it, I don't know, demo, I don't know, 22. <laughs> All right, so if I do a novel list now, you will see my demo 22 is, is, is building. Let's, let's just watch it. It should become active, hopefully, in a little while. Uh, come on. There you go. So, um, come on, that was, I think that was pretty cool. You guys are a tough crowd. <laughs> I actually, you know, from bare metal, I deploy Kubernetes and open stack in containers. Um, yeah. Uh, um, so, you know, to summarize, you know, open stack is really hard. And you guys probably agree with me. <laughs> it's really hard to deploy. Uh, and once it's deployed, it's really hard to manage it. It's really hard to scale it. Uh, let's not talk about upgrading it. Kubernetes makes it easier, but Kubernetes still no, is not for the lighthearted, right? You still have to know how to deploy it. But the good thing is that there's a lot of tools out there that help you uh, with Kubernetes. But you know what? I don't think that's enough. I, I want something. I want to take a step for, uh, farther, right? I want to be able to, you know, you know, just bootstrap it, you know, with a with a turn of a, with a push of a button, you know. I want to, you know, get my server, you know, turn on, and you know, like I said, you know, get a cup of coffee, and then 15 minutes back, come back, and then have an open stack uh, production grade open stack running. That's what I want. Um, and with that, this is my end of presentation. Um, let me know if you have any question. I just want to go back and see the other cluster. So I'm going to switch back to my other Kubernetes cluster and then see what it's doing. OK, so you can see, like, uh, can you see that? Maybe not. So you can see, like, there's some um, services that uh, have started running. So it's getting there, but I promise. I, I promise it's going to get there. Um, but yeah, um, any question, concern, critics, suggestion? No? Going once, twice. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, we have one question, I think. How do you add new nodes to this cluster that you just created? So you showed the control part, right? How do you do the, the metal provisioning that will be used by this cluster? Yeah, uh, the way he asked, uh, how do you add a new node? Uh, the way you add a new node is that uh, you, you know, you, let's say you call HP, IBM, and Odell, you order a new server. All you have to do is just connect, uh, put your server in your rack, connect, network, connect it to your uh, network, uh, um, you know, and then power on. That's it. And I'm talking about the control node, right? I'm talking about the node that will be managed by OpenStack. So, so you showed a workflow where you were able to create a cluster yeah. on which you are running the Open, sorry, uh, uh, OpenStack control plane. Yeah. Using that OpenStack control plane, now I need to manage a whole bunch of bare metal. Is there anything do you have in your demo that shows that? Um, I don't have anything in my demo to show that, but like I said, uh, before doing that, you, to bootstrap your new node, 
like I said, you turn on and that will, and then hopefully you have some profile already uh, that sets it up as a Kubernetes worker. And then uh, it depends how Cola works. So uh, it, I, I don't know how the Nova Compute pod is running. If it's a daemon set, if it's a daemon set, then it will detect that that new host is, you know, is part of Kubernetes and it will install Nova Compute in the host. Does that answer your question? Yeah, we can chat on okay. Any more? Awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs>